In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. I would like to speak to you today about the document that Bergoglio put out on July 16th entitled Traditionis Custodes. First, a brief history of the traditional movement. Ever since Vatican II, there has been an interior civil war of a spiritual nature between the forces of Catholicism and the forces of modernism. Modernism and Catholicism are utterly opposed as much as the devil is opposed to God. They will never coexist together. Nonetheless, the traditional movement established from the embarked from its beginning on a path of coexistence with modernism. All of the divisions which have beset the traditional movement stem from this fundamental error of trying to coexist with the modernists. Archbishop Lefebvre founded his Society of St. Pius X in 1970 precisely for the purpose of seeking a coexistence of modernism and Catholicism. Here we are 50 years later, it is easy to criticize that as the wrong move. But at the time, and I was alive at the time, I was 20 years old, it seemed like the right thing because we did not think of modernists as non-Catholics. We called them liberals. We didn't call them modernists. We called them liberals. We thought they were misled and mistaken and that somehow they would return to normal when they uh, understood that they were on the wrong path. This was the mentality of the time. So it was, it was uh, when I say that, it's not to say that, uh, it's not to criticize him, it's just to say that that was the, the mentality of the time. But with the passage of time, however, this course appeared to be more and more the wrong path. The event of 1983, in which nine American priests were expelled from the society, was a symptom of the tension between the two positions of coexistence and non-coexistence. Because as the 70s progressed, the division between those two things became more and more pronounced, that we should coexist or not coexist. And there were similar events to that 1983 event in Europe and in South America. In 1988, Archbishop Lefebvre consecrated four bishops for which he, is, he was excommunicated. But he did not abandon the path of seeking coexistence with the modernists. One would have thought that he would have. But even after he gave an excoriating sermon against the Novus Ordo and against modernism in the sermon of that mass of consecration, he said to reporters afterwards not to worry. In five years, everything will be normalized. A small comment, but which indicated the fact that he intended to stay on the path of reconciling with the modernists. In 1988, because there were uh, quite a few priests and seminarians of the Society of St. Pius X who were disaffected by the idea of consecrating bishops, asked the Vatican to establish something similar to the Society of St. Pius X, but under the auspices of the Novus Ordo hierarchy. And this was the Fraternity of St. Peter, established by John Paul II, for this very purpose. And they exist to this day. And also in 1988, uh, the, oh, excuse me, in the 1980s, I should say, uh, put John Paul II established something called the Indult Mass, making possible the celebration of the traditional Mass by even diocesan priests or religious order priests in parishes given certain conditions. And then in 2007, Ratzinger, that is Benedict XVI, 
gave the traditional mass, the traditional Latin mass, a legal status by calling it the extraordinary form of the Roman Rite. He said the Roman Rite ha has a, an ordinary form and an extraordinary form. The ordinary form is the new mass of 1969, and the, the extraordinary form is the traditional Latin mass. When he said it, everyone knew that it was an absurdity. Everyone did. But this is what he said. But what it did is that it gave the traditional Latin mass a legal status as a Roman rite, which was significant. So there was gradually from the 1980s a liberalization of the use of the traditional Latin mass under the auspices of the Novus Ordo. That is, more and more permissions and even establishing it as the uh, as an alternative Roman rite. So at the same, the same time from the 1980s right up till the present day, interest in the traditional Latin mass grew steadily among priests, seminarians, and lay people. It became very popular. It, it, it became popular among the young priests and the young seminarians and young lay people. And Cardinal Mueller pointed this out in his criticism of what Bergoglio did. He pointed out that the interest in this is among the young people. There is a chalice dealer in New York who said whenever the, because he had on the one side of his shop all of the modern chalices, the other side of the shop all of the traditional chalices, like the ones you see here. He said when the seminarians, the Novus Ordo seminarians, arrive from Baltimore and other places, they don't even look at the modern chalices. They want the traditional. Now he told me that years ago, which is indicative of their, their attitudes, but I know from other sources that the, that the, the young priests and the, the young seminarians, great many of them, are interested in the traditional mass. And in Father Chicata's book, you may remember that he referred to Father Retro, who was the young priest, well-dressed in a cassock, who said the traditional Latin mass, and that was, that was true. So the, this it has been a growing movement, and it is alarming to the Novus Ordo. The Novus Ordo is a dying religion. Its demographics are disastrous. Right, I was told of a parish of 15,000 souls where there were three funerals a week last year, but only one wedding. That's the demographics of the Novus Ordo. We are about 150 souls and we have two to three weddings a year and maybe one funeral. So it's the opposite. They are a dying institution from the point of view of demographics. And it's actually the older priests, the gray-haired priests, that usually are interested in maintaining the, the, the new mass and are very opposed to the traditional mass. So with this proliferation of the traditional mass, there, there grew up a dislike, even an abhorrence for the new mass and, the Vatic and Vatican II in general. And that's inevitable because the traditional mass teaches the traditional theology, the traditional doctrine of the mass, the blessed sacrament, the priesthood. It's inevitable. So it's, this is not a question of two rites coexisting. This is a, a battle of two religions. The Catholic Church is no stranger to diversity of rites. There were always many rites in the Catholic Church, both in East and West. You may not realize it, but there are many Western 
Catholic rights, such as the Dominican rite, the rite of Lyon in France, the Ambrosian rite in Milan, the Norbertine rite, and before St. Pius V, there were even others in the Middle Ages, the Sarum rite, the Mozarabic rite in Spain, the Sarum rite in England. And in the East, there are many, many rites in many languages. And at a certain point, the church even authorized a Chinese missile. In the 17th century, authorized the Chinese missile. The church is no stranger to many rites, and its unity is not in any way offended by these many rites, because they all speak the same language, so to speak, in this sense, that they all are telling the same religion. They are teaching the same truths. Even though you would not recognize these masses, nonetheless, if you looked at the prayers and you looked at the rites and all of the gestures, etc., you would see the Catholic religion in them. But what the church cannot tolerate is a diversity of religions. Absolutely not. It is the one true church. And its first duty is to teach the doctrine that has been handed to them, to the church, by Christ. The problem between the new mass and the traditional mass is they are teaching, that is telegraphing, two different religions with contradictory doctrines and incompatible disciplines. The traditional mass telegraphing everything that you see in a traditional catechism about the holy sacrifice of the mass and about all of the truths of the Catholic faith. It is the product of the Catholic Church for many centuries, just like a great tree that has grown over many hundreds of years. A beautiful thing that has grown gradually. Whereas the new mass is the invention of modernists, they have stripped out of it all of the typically Catholic doctrines and have made it a generic Christian rite. That is clear in Father Chicada's book, The Work of Human Hands. He did a study, a detailed study, of every single oration in the Missal, that is, the prayer that comes before the Epistle, the secret prayer, and the post-communion prayer, and pointed out with footnotes and all the references necessary so that you can check how they stripped these orations of Catholic doctrine so that now they're just a vanilla-flavored Christian prayer. And don't forget, that was done with the help of six Protestants, six Protestant ministers. the new mass. So each, and it each has had its effect. The traditional mass has made Catholics in their hearts of those who attend it. They learn from it. They learn to love the traditions of the church. The new mass has been a faith killer. To 80% of those who attend the new mass do not believe in transubstantiation, do not believe that the blessed sacrament is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. 80%. Why is that so? Because they treat the blessed sacrament, what purports to be the blessed sacrament on the Novus Ordo altar as nothing but a piece of bread. In the traditional Mass, you might notice that the priest is very careful about the particles. The Council of Trent says that Christ is present in each of the small particles. So you see him doing this with the wiping the paten and wiping the communion plate very carefully, looking to see. He keeps his fingers like this during the Mass, lest there be any particle on his fingers that could go astray. And I was told not too long ago that in order to disabuse seminarians that the particles contain truly the body of Christ, 
the priest took up the patent after Holy Communion and blew on it. And all of the particles went all over the place. That's the new mass that teaches that that is not the body of Christ, but merely bread. That's the difference. And 87% of New Mass Catholics, Novosordites, believe that artificial birth control is perfectly okay. The New Mass is a faith killer. It's, it empties the churches. On Long Island, I saw the, the statistic that 80% of those baptized have left the church by their early 20s. 80%. That's the fruits of Vatican II. Our Lord said, you shall know them from their fruits. So the, uh, so Archbishop Lefebvre aptly called the new mass, the mass of Luther. And that's exactly what it is. As a matter of fact, Jungmann, who was, he's dead now, but the prince of the modernist liturgists, just the absolute authority, the top man, said that no one even spoke of mass facing the people until Martin Luther. It has no tradition whatsoever in the Catholic Church. It comes from the arch heretic Martin Luther. He admitted that. <clears throat> It's a faith killer. So it is therefore impossible for priests to say the traditional mass without perceiving the doctrinal differences between pre and post Vatican II Catholicism. You can't do it. You, can't, you cannot not perceive it. <coughs> so it was not merely a diversity of rights as Ratzinger would have had it. It was a diversity of religions. And Bergoglio on July 16th declares war on the traditional movement. In this document called Tradiciones Custodes, which means the guardians of tradition, <clears throat> which is something about which you should laugh out loud because those people are not those, he says the bishops, the Novus Ordo bishops in it are the guardians of tradition. Laugh out loud. Because they, there's not a single tradition that they, of which they are the guardian, not, not a Catholic tradition. They are the guardians of heresy <clears throat> and of modernism, of all forms of immorality, <clears throat> of predation upon young persons, those traditions which go back way, way, f very far in the human race, they are the guardians of those traditions, <clears throat> but they are not the guardians of Catholic tradition. But he calls them that. He describes this, Bergoglio describes this war of religions in this document, which exists between the modernists and the Catholics. He rightly perceives the, the, the cause of this growth of Catholicism, that is, this interest in pre-Vatican II Catholicism, and of its logical abhorrence of modernism, and the cause is the traditional Latin Mass. He's absolutely right. He says it right in the document. He's perfectly right, I totally agree. For it is impossible to prevent the traditional Latin mass from forming Catholics. Any more than to hand them a catechism, an ex a Catholic catechism, and expect them to be modernists after they've read it. And the mass is far more impressive on your minds as a teacher than any catechism in print. And when a priest says the traditional Latin mass every day, 
that has an impression upon him, and I've had Novus Ordo priests tell me this, that it gets to you, and you see the difference between the two rites and the two religions very clearly. It can't help it. So he has severely curtailed it, the traditional Latin mass, so much so that Cardinal Mueller, who is what you'd call a conservative modernist, <clears throat> uh, told him that you have curtailed it to such an extent that it is going to go extinct as a result of what you have done. And certainly that is on the mind, no doubt, of Bergoglio. He has always hated traditionalists he has always hated anybody, even, even Novus Ordos who adhere to tradition. Time and time again, he has called us rigid and used all sorts of adjectives, uh, very insulting adjectives about anybody who retains Catholicism from the beginning of his so-called pontificate. And this is really the, the ultimate, his ultimate expression of his hatred for pre-Vatican II Catholicism, which is the true faith. <clears throat> so this move should signal to the traditional movement that it should abandon the idea of coexistence. The traditional movement has essentially three branch branches. The one is what I said, the fraternity of St. Peter and similar groups and people who were observing the, all of the permissions, the indult mass, the, the Ratzinger permissions, all of those people, in theory they say, oh yes, this is just a question of two rights. We are not against Vatican II. We accept Vatican II. We accept the new mass as a Catholic rite, but we just prefer the traditional. That's their theoretical position. In fact, they hate the new mass and they detest Vatican II. And they can't help it. If you adhere to tradition, you're going to be opposed to Vatican II. Two things that are contradictory, black and white. Then there, are, then there is the Society of St. Pius X, which says, we are against Vatican II, we are against the new mass, but we are with the modernist hierarchy and we want to be absorbed by them, we want to, a legal status with them and be, have a coexistence with them. So when you walk into their churches, there is a picture of none other than Bergoglio, right in the vestibule. And worse than that, they mention his name in the canon of the mass, putting the mass under the tutelage and auspices of the Novus Ordo, at least by desire. I say by desire because they say, oh, we're with the Pope, assuming for a moment that Bergoglio is a real Pope. They say, we're with the Pope and the state of Acantus are not, and that's why they're evil. They are not with the Pope, in quotation marks, because the Pope, in quotation marks, is not with them. They are considered schismatics. Bergoglio even mentions the schism of Archbishop Lefebvre. So they are in that document, in the very document. They are considered schismatics by the Novus Ordo. So if, if two people are walking down the street, say John and Mary, John cannot say, I'm with Mary, if Mary is not without John. To be with involves two things. It's mutual. So they can't say, well, we're with the Pope, if the Pope is not with them. And the more important of the two is the Pope. So it's a sham. And although they give him that honor, they treat him as if he does not exist. They found churches, seminaries, schools, all sorts of ecclesiastical institutions treating him as if he doesn't exist, treating the hierarchy, the bishops, as if he, they do not exist. Pius IX said, now this is the 1850s, 1860s, referring to a group in the East that did exactly the same thing, you're the Pope, but we do what we want. 
He said, that is schismatic. That attitude is schismatic. And that's precisely what the SSPX is guilty of, is a spirit of schism. And then the third is our position, which is that because this Novus Ordo, Novus Ordo hierarchy, including the person who is elected to the papacy, is proposing to the church doctrines and disciplines, morals, etc., which are contrary to Catholic teaching, it is impossible that he be, the, that that be the true hierarchy, that Bergoglio be the true pope, and that the bishops be true bishops. In this sense, it is impossible that they have the authority of Christ to teach, rule, and sanctify the church. Why is this so? Because of the principle of indefectibility. Indefectibility is a dogma of the Catholic Church, whereby it has the assistance of the Holy Ghost in order that it constantly teach the truth and teach all things that are conducive to salvation and cannot teach falsehood, cannot teach those things which are evil, pernicious, in some way sinful, either in the doc doctrinal or moral order. Our, our Lord sent the apostles, apostle means to send in Greek, sent them and said, I am with you all days even to the consummation of the world. And he said to them, I will send you the Holy Ghost, the paraclete. He will teach you all things. That's the indefectibility of the Catholic Church. And it has proven this indefectibility for all of the ages that it has existed. It has never deviated from the truth in its doctrines, its morals, its disciplines, its laws, etc., never ever deviated, not once. It's proof positive of the assistance of the Holy Ghost. Look at other religions, how they are so varied. Look at the Protestant religions, so many different religions all claiming to be Christian. Hundreds of them, all differing in dogma, morals, ideas, attitudes, disciplines. That is not part of Catholicism because it is assisted by the spirit of truth. Take that away from Catholicism and you reduce it to ashes. You reduce it to just another human religious sect like the Jehovah's Witnesses. That would be all that it is, no better than the Jehovah's Witnesses if you remove the assistance of the Holy Ghost to the Catholic Church promised by Christ. So therefore, when we are faced with this divergence of doctrine coming from the mouth of this hierarchy, we are bound by this dogma to conclude these people cannot have the authority to teach, rule, and sanctify the church. Therefore, they are false in the positions that they claim to have. That's the third branch of the traditional movement. I compare the situation in the church to the hijacking of an airplane. When planes are hijacked, usually you can tell the hijackers because they look like thugs. They get up, they have weapons, and they manage to get into the cockpit and take over the airplane. But think of hijackers who went through all of the processes of training to be pilots and were employees of the airline for many, many years, wore the uniform, flew planes very successfully to their proper destinations. And they get in the cockpit and announce that they are going to take the plane and crash it into a building. That is very analogous to our situation because the modernists, when they were suppressed in the, under the reign of Pius X, instead of leaving the church, they said to each other, no, let's stay in. We'll have our day. Stay in. The church will be modernized. And they abandoned the idea of changing doctrine 
and went to the idea of making the liturgy the vehicle of their modernism. And that happened in the late teens, during the reign of Benedict the 15th. Little by little, they indoctrinated through these changes that they wanted to see happen. And so they came up through the ranks. They had the uniform of the Catholic Church on. They were elected and appointed to positions of authority. And they did their damage once they got in. So the logic is clear. Either Vatican II and its reforms are a continuation, a substantial continuity with pre-Vatican II Catholicism, or it isn't. There's nothing gray in between those two things. Either it is Catholic or it isn't. If all those reforms are Catholic, are, if they are continuous substantially with what went before, then what we are doing here today is a mortal sin. It's schismatic. If it is not Catholicism, then the church must resist it and, and pit itself against it with the greatest energy that it has in it. More than it resisted any heresy in its history, its 2,000 year history, this is the worst heresy to attack the church. St. Pius X said it. Pius XI said that ecumenism is a grave error which shakes the very foundation of Catholic doctrine. And he said to organize meetings where there is these ecumenical meeting, meetings that we've seen like Assisi and many, many others is equivalent to abandoning the religion revealed by God. Pius XI, 1928. That is what is facing us. This reduces the, the church to dust if we let it go. And indeed it is. Look around. Read the news. One scandal after the other. And worse than those scandals, the abandonment of Catholic doctrine. So have we not learned our lesson after all these years of hoping for coexistence? Should not the traditional movement come together in this rejection of this false hierarchy and say, yes, we have made a, a serious mistake in trying to be one with them? Listen to St. Paul in the Galatians, talking to the Galatians. If we, meaning himself, or an angel from heaven should come and preach to you a gospel different from what I have preached to you, let him be anathema. And he is so insistent upon that fact that he says it twice in the same paragraph. Let him be anathema. The exact words in the same paragraph, the same if we or an angel from heaven. He doesn't say let there be coexistence. Let him be anathema. When a disease invades your body and wants to destroy you, your immune system produces antibodies and will even give you a fever in order to fight efficaciously these evil things in your bloodstream that will kill you if permitted if it doesn't fight back and destroy those things and expel them from your body. And this has to be the attitude of Catholics with regard to modernism. But if we just kneel at their feet and ask for a few crumbs of Catholicism from them, we are going to hand them the very weapons by which they will destroy us
Listen to St. Paul in the second epistle to the Corinthians. What fellowship hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? By Belial he means Satan. Or what part hath the faithful with the unbelievers? And what agreement hath the temple of God with unbelievers? He continues, Wherefore go out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.